area that has to be cleared is who are these rulers? We have to identify them relying on the information that comes to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the explanations that come to us from his prophet. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his. I've encountered some individuals that try to define these rulers as munafiqeen. We're all familiar with that word and we're all familiar with that terminology. So let us visit, to let us see if this actually applies to them. The ayat in the Qur'an, and there's many ayat in the Qur'an that shed light on who the munafiqeen are. And of course, we can't cover all of that territory. But let us begin from the beginning. In Surah Al-Baqarah, the Surah begins with three ayat that define for us Al-Mu'mini. That's followed by two ayat that define for us Al-Kafiri. Those are followed by 13 ayat, verses of the Qur'an, that define for us Al-Munafiqi. The first thing we notice is it took many ayat to help us understand who the munafiqeen are. That wasn't the case with the mu'mini, it wasn't the case with the kafirin. And the reason for that is the munafiqeen, they are chameleons, they change their character, they change their presentation, they change their appearance, they, ch they change and they change according to their own interests. So when the ayat begin to speak about the munafiqeen, and listen closely, many times we read through the Qur'an very fast, and we can get into an accident doing that. So let us, you know, take our time to understand what is being said. And this, these are the final words on the subject. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And there are some people who say that we have committed ourselves to Allah and we affirm the final day but they are not committed. Think. That's what's required. Think. Allah Jalla wa Ala said, وَمِنَ nas." There are some people. He didn't say, مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ He didn't say, مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ He said, مِنَ nas." Just average people that will come up and say, yeah, we are committed to Allah. وَمِنَ nas مَنْ يَقُولُ They say, I hope you're familiar with um, the statements of committed Muslims. When we express our commitment or our conviction or our persuasion, we say nashhad. The ayah didn't say that. Allah Jalla wa Ala didn't say that. He didn't say. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْهَدْ No. So that's communicating to us that what these types of people say is superficial. It's bogus. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولْ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah is telling us even though they are saying what they are saying 
be aware, be confident that they are not committed to Allah. Okay, that's one ayah. There's 12 other ayah that follow that detail for you the nature, the characteristics, and the behavior of these types of people. The word munafiqin, I haven't even uh, explained what it means yet. The word munafiqin and the ayat of nifaq were revealed in al Medina. They were not revealed in Mecca. When Muslims were in Mecca, they didn't have any power, they didn't have any authority, they didn't have any governance, they were oppressed, they were excluded, they were quote unquote, quote, on the run. But then when the Muslims acquired a power base in al Medina, then all of a sudden we had ayat being revealed to teach us that there's going to be a category of people that are going to pretend to be committed to Allah. This is extremely important to understand because a nifaq is a function or is a development of gaining power and authority. We don't have munafiqeen if we don't have power and authority. And then, during the course of the following 12 ayat, Allah says about these munafiqeen, وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ When they are in the seclusion with their demons, they say to them, the munafiqeen, munafiqeen say to their demons, demons here is not some uh, ethereal, spiritual thing. No. Human beings who act like Satan. So when these munafiqi meet them in private, they say, we are with you. <laughs> when we say we are committed to the committed Muslims, we say that uh, lightly. We don't mean it. In jest. So there's a back channel connection between Munafiqi in an Islamic power base that have their connections with the enemies of Islam. And then another area towards the end of this 13, these 13 ayat, it says, أَوْ تَصَيِّبٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فِيهِ ظُلُمَاتٌ وَرَعْضٌ وَبَرْ يَجْعَلُونَ أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي آذَانِهِمْ مِنَ الصَّوَاعِ حَذَرَ الْمَوْتِ وَاللَّهُ مُحِيطٌ بِالْكَافِرِينَ Allah is speaking about munafiqeen. After explaining all of this to us, and after we understand who they are, they turn out to be kafirin. These rulers that we have in our countries, who are looking at the massacre and the mayhem in the Holy Land. First of all, they are not subject to an Islamic authority. We never had in those pace-setting years of the Prophet and the first generation with him, 
we never had those who claim to be committed Muslims becoming the ruler of the rest of the Muslims. This didn't exist. But it, 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 it exists now. So we can't pluck out a definition from an Islamic order and then place it on those who don't belong to an Islamic order. The problem that we have is that these people who are in positions of power and authority, kings, presidents, emirs, prime ministers, ministers, whatever you want to call them, they present us with rituals. They appear to be Muslims. They even say that they are committed Muslims. But are we going to believe their imagery? Or are we going to believe the information and the guidance that comes to us from on high? It's your choice. There's an ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah that says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amadu, la tattakhidu yahuda wa nasara awliya, ba'duhum awliya u ba'd, wa man yatawallahum minkum, fa innahu minhum. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ Okay, now we enter into difficult mental terrain for some of us. In this area, Allah is speaking to you and me as committed Muslims. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Notice Allah is not speaking to those who are in power or authority. The speech in the Qur'an goes to the Muslim masses, the Muslim public, the Muslim people. Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amin. La tattakidhu yahuda wa nasara awliya. Do not Ally yourselves, do not align yourselves with a Yahud and a Nasar. These are two words that are frequently mentioned in the Quran. I'm sure all of you are familiar with it. A Yahud and a Nasar. Words of the Quran are fine tuned by the context that they are in. In this particular context, the fine-tuning of the word al-Yahud and the word al-Masara is done by the word awliya, which means as your premiers. So Allah is telling the committed Muslim population not to have any alliance with the political, militarist ideology of Al-Yahud and the political, militarist ideology of Al-Nasar. The word, the word that's used most frequently to translate Al-Yahud is Jews. And the word that's used most frequently to translate the word al-Nasara is Christians. But if it is left like that, there's going to be confusion as to, oh, we can't become close to those who are Jews and those who are Christians. This confusion is generated by not tying the word al-Yahud and the Nasara with the word awliya.
but it could happen. If it was impossible to happen, Allah would not be guiding us in this issue. From among al-ladhina amanu, those who rule al-ladhina amanu, we may have those who find that they are comfortable politically, economically, militarily, with al Yahud and al Nasara as power configurations. This is not an issue of having friends with al Yahud and Nasara, no. And then the ayah says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ And whoever enters into an alliance, who's going to enter into an alliance? The uh, pharmacist around the corner? Or the butcher down the block? Who makes the decision to enter into an alliance with the power block of a Yahud and the power block of a Nasara? Who does that? those who are ruling over us. And when they do that, the ayah is clear. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ Whoever aligns themselves politically, militarily, ideologically, with them. We're not speaking about here rituals. We're not speaking about theological issues, whoever, and look at the Muslim, absorb the meaning of this ayah, and then look at those who are ruling over we, the Muslims. What are they doing? They're doing exactly what this ayah is saying not to do. So when they do it, multilateral agreements, bilateral agreements, military bases of the Yahud and Nasara on Islamic lands, among Islamic peoples. Allah says, whoever does such a thing becomes part of them. Meaning the ruling class in our countries no longer belongs to us. Now, it is part of the power structures of the Yahud and the Nasar. That power and ideological and military structure is called Zionism and imperialism. We have to upgrade the understanding of these ayat in the Quran to begin to address the reality that is killing us, and we're not able to do that? A hadith from Allah's Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his, says, this is an illustration of these beings. لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَتَنْهَوُنَّ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَلَتَأْخُذُنَّ عَلَى يَدِ الظَّالِمِ وَلَتَقْصُرُنَّهُ عَلَى الْحَقِّ قَصْرًا وَلَتَأْطُرُنَّهُ عَلَى الْحَقِّ قَطْرًا أَوْ لَيَضْلِبَنَّ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَ بَعْضِكُمْ بِبَعْضٍ وَلَيَلْعَنُكُمْ كَمَا لَعَنَهُمْ This hadith says the Prophet worded the meanings with emphasis. لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَتَنْهَوُنَّ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ You most definitely, the verb 
in this sentence begins with an emphasizer and ends with an emphasizer. You, الَّذِينَ amanu. You are the ones who are responsible for enforcing the ma'roof. And this doesn't mean going getting a shotgun or a machine gun and enforcing the ma'roof. It means to gain the functions of governments to have a ma'roof mainstreamed. لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوف And what is a ma'roof? It is that which is self-evidently good and true and just. It doesn't need a philosophy, it doesn't need a religion, it doesn't need an ideology to tell you that this is the right thing to do. A siddiq is ma'roof. Saving a person's life is a ma'roof. Regardless of what type of persuasion a Muslim has, or a person has, whether it is Islamic, or non-Islamic, or even anti-Islamic. And Ma'roof transcends all of these barriers. Every human being knows what the Ma'roof is. That's what we are responsible for. لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ and equally so, وَلَا تَنْهَوُنَّ عَنِ الْمُنْكَ And you will dismantle, and you will forbid, and you will ban the munka. Munka, once again, is known by everyone. If someone goes out to the street, and just walks there, and kills an innocent person, which religion, which ideology, which philosophy is going to tell you that person did a good thing? That's a munkar. And that munkar has to be streamlined and has to become the norm of life on earth. That's what we are responsible for. And then the Prophet goes on to teach us, only we follow, and says, وَلَا تَأْخُذُنَّ عَلَى يَدِ الظَّالِمِ And you, the committed Muslims, your responsibility is to control the function or the operation of a ظالم. Someone who's doing injustice, someone who's oppressing, and who does injustice and oppression? Those who are in seats of authority and power. It's not your little child. It's not your neighbor who's struggling day to day to have ends meet. It's the person on top. And we are responsible for taking hold, literally speaking, of his hand. وَلَا تَأْخُذُنَّ عَلَى يَدِ الظَّالِمِ Look at our condition in the world. We have rulers in about 60 odd or 50 odd nation states who, when it comes to us, the people, the Muslims in these nation states, who, who even has access to a Allah. They have security all over the place. Remember the first generation of Muslims? There were no security guards. They would come to a masjid just like this. Who's the ruler that we have who can come to the masjid without any security guards? That means it's our responsibility to place a, a person who's not who's in charge, who's not doing justice, to place him in the framework, in the frame of justice and social justice. Who, who, how are we doing something like that? And if we're not doing something like that, what happened to us? Why aren't we? 
Why has power been monopolized by those on the top and we here are unable to do anything? So the hadith, I'm sorry, I see my time is winding down. The hadith ends by saying, if we don't do that, what the Prophet of Allah just described, Allah is going to cause our hearts to collide with each other. We're going to clash with each other. See the clashes that are taking place? Because the rulers are off limits. We're not supposed to think about them with the information that comes to us from Allah and His Prophet. They manage to sideline all of this information, life-giving information, sideline all of that, and we've been reduced to identifying persons by Oh, how did he perform, or how did she perform their wudu? Or where do they put their hands when they pray? Or how long is their pants, or fellow? Or how short is it? Or does a person have a full beard? Or does he trim his beard? This is the area, this is the quicksand that we are sinking in. I'm sorry, my, I ran out of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us do His will on earth. Thank you. 